everybody likes a good story, right? Um, I think that I'm a pretty good storyteller. So I'm going to give you a story. This is a true story. Um, a funny story that happened to me. Um, I'll be honest with y'all. I like to travel just like most of you. I I love to travel. Um, I am big on traveling. Uh, I've said it before in this podcast, uh, my two favorite cities to go to, uh, in the world. Um, number one, New York city, number one, a, uh, Los Angeles, California. Those are my two favorite places to go. Right. Um, I have traveled in internationally. Um, and I enjoy traveling internationally. Uh, but I am very, very cautious about where I go internationally because I know that everybody doesn't necessarily take too kindly to, um, Americans. Uh, I'm not really sure how people take kind. I don't know if people take too kindly to black Americans and I am an American and I am black. Well, first, let me first, first and foremost say I am black. Uh, that goes without saying I'm black and then I'm an American. Um, but anyway, so I always say like, you know, when you get, when you go out of town, you know, you got to play by the out of town rules. You, you can't go someplace and make waves. And so, um, I always keep that in mind, particularly when I'm traveling. And if I travel internationally, I know that whatever you do, you don't want to mess with the locals and you don't want to offend the locals. Um, <laughs> funny story sidebar real quick. Uh, I remember, um, my wife and I, we went to, um, Jamaica for, uh, we went to Jamaica for a honeymoon and then we went again, uh, for a wedding. And, um, both times that we went, we went to, uh, we had an excursion to Dun River Falls and, <laughs> Just to kind of give you an idea, like at Dun River Falls, you go through this area, whatever, like that, this, what they call the market. And at the market, there are people that who are trying to get you to buy stuff and they're bar, they do what they call bartering. So like if you got this piece of wood and they're trying to sell you this piece of wood that says that they can carve out your name in, 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 um, in this piece of wood and they're trying to sell it to you for 10, if you say, Hey, I'll give you five for it you know, there's no set price. Right. So it's like one of those things. And so I remember even leaving out of that area. And I remember this and, and the Jamaicans in this particular part of Jamaica are very aggressive. Right. And I remember going through the market and everybody's like, Hey, Hey, you want this? You want this? Like they were trying to get you to buy stuff. And you are literally walking through a crowd of people and they're constantly asking if you want to buy something. And, um, one Jamaican brother said, he's like, man, he was trying to get me to buy this piece of wood. And I was like, nah, man, I'm good. And he's like, nah, man, go on, bro. You, you need to buy it, my brother. You need to buy it. He's like, I was like, nah, man, I'm good. And he was like, you motherfucker, you not black. You ain't no brother. <laughs> and I turned around like, what the hell did you just say? But when I turned around, I realized like, dog you not in the united states you can't turn around and cuss this dude out because you don't know who he's with or anything you're a foreigner here you can't trip so i turned around and then i turned my ass back around and kept walking he was offended that he said i wasn't black because i didn't buy his piece of wood so that was a little lesson that you know when you when when you out of the country you got to play by the rules you know what i'm saying you, you and you don't want to make waves so back to the to the lecture at hand um this past at the time of this recording last summer uh got a chance to visit cancun mexico uh first time for me uh heading out to mexico i had never been to mexico before um for those of you, before you ask, uh, I don't speak a lot of Spanish. I can speak Spanish. I can't speak it fluently, though. 
if you speak Spanish and you talk like this, I can understand you. But if you don't talk like that, I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Like I can pick up on words. Uh, I took Spanish in high school, uh, but high school is 30 years ago. Right. So and then, you know, honestly, Spanish is a lot like English as far as some of the words. Now, phrases and stuff, I'm not really that up on. But anyway, I would always kind of hesitated toward going and I'm not really big on going places where I don't speak the language. So if I if I were to leave the United States. I want to go someplace where I speak the language. Or at the very least, I have someone with me who speaks the language, because if there's ever trouble. I need to know what's being said. You know what I'm saying? I don't need nobody say, hey, let's jump this dude. <laughs> and I don't know that they about to jump me. Right. So anyway, made my, made my way to Cancun. Uh, my wife and I, Sharice, uh, we went to Cancun to celebrate my homegirl, Shelly Shell's 50th birthday. Shout out to Shell. If you guys have been following the podcast, you've heard her on here before. Um, so, yeah, we it was a big 50th celebration. I mean, it's a milestone. It's Shelly Shell. She's turning 50. You know, we're going to go to Cancun and turn up. And I hit Shell up and I was like, yo, who, you know, just like anybody else, you ask, okay, well, who, who all's coming? You know, and Shell introduced me to a couple of her friends that they were coming um, and some people that she had talked about, some people I'd seen on Facebook or whatever like that. And like, if you know Shell, you kind of know her friends uh, just through some of the experiences and posts and stuff that she's made or whatever like that. So everybody on everybody that she told me that was coming was cool. The only I'd only met um, two other people, and then I'm friends with one of her other friends. Um, so I so there was there was going to be some familiar faces, if you will. Uh, but for the birthday trip, it was going to be about I want to say it was a couple of couples, but I think all in all, I think we we're about twenty deep, and we were staying at this resort, beautiful resort in Cancun. So Sharice and I fly in, we get there. And I'd ask y'all, I'm like, yo, what's what's the plan? What, what are we doing? How are we moving? You know, are we doing something, you know, and whatever. She's like, there's an itinerary. This is what we're going to do, blah, 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 blah. And so we got in on Sunday and Shell's birthday was uh, on that Tuesday. Well, the plan was, was that we were going to leave the resort on Tuesday on Shell's birthday. We're going to go to dinner at one of the restaurants on the resort. And then after that, we were going to uh, hop in a couple of vans because we were all going 20 deep. <laughs> and we were going to hop in a couple of vans. And we were going to go downtown, downtown Cancun. It actually wasn't Cancun. It was like some other neighboring city. Let's just say, let's say Cancun. All right. Um, so we were going there and we were going to, you know, hang out and party. And that's all she said was just hang out and party. I'm like, all right, so you know what this what what, what what's with this party? Um, but the resort was beautiful, great restaurants right there on the beach. Um, Sharice and I enjoyed ourselves. All it's all inclusive. So we ate, we drank, you know. I drank so much, man. It was it was ridiculous. Um, but you know, it was I mean, I ain't get I ain't get drunk or nothing like that, but I I, I had my fair share of drinks. So anyway. So fast forward to Tuesday. So we all go to dinner. Every we sang happy birthday to Shell, and you know everybody got a chance to get up at dinner and say something nice, and you know talk about how they knew her and stuff like that. And some of her, like she had childhood friends that she's known since she was like four or five years old and everything. So it was really really dope. Everybody in the party is cool. Everybody that you know, all of her friends are cool, and I got a chance to you know get to know you know some some names that some people that I'd seen, you know, on social media, but didn't know them, you know, personally, whatever like that. And so it was all love. So, you know, it's not always easy to travel in, in big groups, uh, particularly when you don't know people like that, but this was cool. Cause uh, again, all of us are grown with it. We're not little kids. Right. So they rented, two vans and let's just say there were 10 people in each van and so uh <laughs> so the van comes to pick us up from our, our resort 
And now keep in mind now when you when you're on the resort, you know, everything is taken care of, everything's paid for, you already paid for everything. So, you know, you don't need nothing, you don't even have to tip people. And and again, and what's cool about it was like you're walking around the resort and, and you know, have gardeners and people doing landscaping and stuff like that everybody's friendly hello good morning my friend good morning my friend good morning mi amigo <laughs> i was mi amigo like for a whole week and uh eh, bueno dia mi, ami mi amigo I'm like bueno dias mi amigo and so i was mi amigo you know all weekend all week i should say because we were there for a week and so <laughs> so we we get in two vans and we drive to the downtown scene and the downtown scene was very modernized uh downtown was probably about maybe about a 20 minute drive from where we were a straight shot you know what i'm saying so i was like okay this is cool and so um but before we got in the vans there was there was van a and there was van b van b was driven i was on van b Van A was driven by some guy and Van B was driven by another guy. That, the guy that drove Van B could speak English. The guy who drove Van A could not speak English. Um, and before we got into the prospective vans, the guy from Van B was talking to Van A and the guy from Van B said, we will drop them off and we will come back and get them. And I saw the guy from Van A do like this. He shook his head. I thought that was kind of peculiar because I'm like, wait a minute. He, he does understand he has to come back and pick us up because he'd already gotten paid, right? And or I think he got paid to come pick us up and then they're going to get paid to take us back. Um, so anyway, I, I, I just caught that exchange. It was very brief very brief or whatever like that so we drive down or whatever like that we're riding and you know i'm on my was i don't even think i was on my phone um i'm I, I was really particularly looking at the surroundings because i was mentally making landmarks as to okay if i have to scramble do i know how to get back to where we were but it was a straight shot so it was it was it was easy right so we get to the downtown scene and they drop us off. They drop us off and they said, well, well, hey, we all got out 10 deep in one, 10 deep in van A, 10 deep in van B. And the guy from van B said, we will be back at 1230 to pick you up. This was like maybe it's probably about probably about 930. So he's like, we'll be back at 1230. Be right here at this stop for in, in front of this place to be picked up. So he was like, all right, cool. And so we walk the block and then we turn the corner. So we walk maybe about two blocks. And again, now I'm rolling with the, with the crew. I don't know where we're going. Cause I, I never said like, yo, what are we doing? They just said we we're going. And then somebody said, oh, well, we're going to go to a club. And I was like, really? We're going to a club. I'm like, man, do I really want to go to a club in Cancun? Like, I don't know, you know, and this, I mean, and keep in mind that we, we still in COVID now. This is, it, this ain't the height of COVID, but it's still, you know, it's, 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 this is summer 2022, right? So anyway, um, we get to the club and, you know, did they, they, they patted the dudes down. They ain't pat the women down, which I'm not a fan of that. Like if you're going to pat me down, pat everybody down because Anybody can have a gat up in here. But anyway, so we get in the club and I don't even, I, I, I left my mask back at, this, at the spot. So I don't even have my mask and come to find out the club was like open, like there was no roof. So it's open air. So I'm like, okay, well shit, we should be good. Like it's open air. We should be, we should be fine as far as COVID is concerned. Um, <laughs> So anyway, we get to the club and the DJ is spinning like he's spinning like records. I mean, first it was like some um, reggaeton. And then he went to his American set and he was actually playing hip hop. So we in there like 
he's playing 50 Cent. He's playing Dr. Dre. He's playing like a nice little set. So we in there jamming. And the club was actually kicking. Like when we first got in there, we were one of the first few people to get in there. But like within an hour's time, man, the club was packed. So I mean, like I'm, 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 I got my drip on, as the kids say. <laughs> Sharice, she's dripped out, and Shell is here, and everybody, and we, we, we got bottles, and we were having drinks, and like everything was was dope, man. It was, it, it was a, and then well, the cool part about it was with the club being open air, there was a constant breeze that was coming through, so you weren't even like really sweaty, even though it was hot, because again, it's, it's Mexico. But it was still, it was, it was dope. And so I was standing where I was standing was like on the stage and I was standing next to the DJ and he played something and I pointed to him like, yo, I feel you. And he hit his chest like my man. And I was like, okay, my man play something. And so he went and he started scratching and stuff. And he was, he played like the South, like he was playing like outcast and he was, his set was night. I mean, like I was impressed for Mexico, right? So I'm like, man, this is dope. So me and Sharice are dancing. We kind of, we're on the stage. And then we, so we went off the stage and then we moved into like this VIP section. So we're in the VIP. So we're above everybody else. So we're kind of looking down on the crowd. And uh, we, we saw some funny things happening. We saw, you know, because Sharice and I love the people watch. We people watch and we elbow each other. Like, look at this, look at this one right here. Like that. So that was funny. So we were laughing and we were just having a good time. Uh, one of the cats that came with us, he got like slizzard. And so he fell asleep in the club. And that was funny. I got a video of him going to sleep in the club. Um, you know, I was taking pictures. I got a couple of videos or whatever like that. Um, so it was, it was dope, man. It was so dope. And then like, you just knew like something was going to happen. Like it was almost too good to be true. So. A couple of ladies left the club, right? They said that they were hungry. And it was two ladies. They left the club. They were with the they were with us. They left the club and they said they were hungry. They were gonna go get something to eat and come back because apparently in Cancun, you can leave the club and come back in. No problem, right? So they went to go get something to eat. But by this time, it's like getting close. It's like right around midnight. So, you know, we're kind of like, okay, well, we probably need to start making our way back to the spot. So we'll be there at 1230 when, you know, the boys in the vans come back. And so <laughs> we all kind of got together and, and we rounded it, rounded up the crew. So we're, you know, 18 deep now. And we leave the club. We leave the club. We got to walk two blocks. Well, in the last block, last half a block, we saw the two ladies and they were sitting outside on the patio of this pizza place. Right. And so we said, what's up? We was like, yo, we going to the spot. We're going to be around the corner because it literally was around the corner. And they were like, all right, cool. We, we about to leave in a minute. And it's probably about 12, 15 ish, you know, so we still on time. I mean, we'll, we'll get there to the meeting spot and be cool and be ready to roll once the vans pull up. And so we're standing there. And so we walk past again, the ladies are still there and we're standing there. So we're, we make it to the spot. So I'm talking to Sharice and I'm like, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I was like, yeah, had a good time. She was like, yeah, had a good time. You know, we talking to Shell and we, everybody's laughing and joking and, um, they had already made contact with the, the van people and they were coming back to come scoop us up. Right. So we were there a little early and, you know, we just waiting on the van and then one van pulls up just one. And we're like, well, where's the other van? So van B pulls up, but van a does not pull up. And remember, I told you that the guy from Van A said, like, he wasn't coming back. 
And so, so we were standing there trying to figure out. So the guy from Van B jumps out and he's like, uh, I'm trying to get somebody else. He was like, my friend is, he, he couldn't come back or whatever. Like he's offering up some lame ass excuse. And so we, we were standing there befuddled because we're like, bro, we 20 deep, 20 people can't fit into this thing. You know, it's, it's a 10 passenger van. So that's all it's going to be. And so we're standing there. So we're trying to figure out like, who's going to get in the van van. I mean, by this time, Sharice's like, look, I'm, I'm getting, we getting on this van. <laughs> She's like, we getting in this van. I was like, all right, you know, uh, let's just kind of wait and see what's what. And so we're still standing there waiting and you know people are about to start getting into the van and then all of a sudden i see one of the guys a guy named gary gary comes around the corner right and his real name not gary i'm not going to use the real name gary comes around the corner gary's like he's 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 I, I see his mouth moving but i'm not understanding what he's saying and he's he's coming around the corner he's walking fast and right behind him are the two ladies and Gary's like, get the fuck in the van. 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 And I'm like, who is he talking to? And they're right behind him. So they, the ladies go and they jump right in the van real fast. And then all of a sudden you see this little Mexican guy come flying around the corner. And I mean, he's like speed walking. And I'm like, man, what the hell is going on? And I literally said, what the hell? Because the Mexican guy is saying something. He's fussing and he's yelling and it's in Mexican. And I don't understand. I mean, it's, it's in, in, in Spanish. And I don't understand what he's saying because he's, he's talking too fast. And he said, the one word that I did hear was Police. And I said, police. And as soon as I, I kid y'all not, as soon as I said police, woo, <laughs> two Mexican police cars pull up and the cops get out and both cops are carrying AK-47s. AK-47 is the tool. Don't make me act a motherfucking fool. Um, so I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And so the cops pull up and the little Mexican guy is fussing and he's pointing at the van. And then he goes from speaking in Spanish to speaking in English, then speaking back in this, but which I think is crazy because like, don't play with me, man. Just speak your language. And so He's fussing at them. And then so the guy gets out. Gary gets out of the van. And Gary says, look, this is what happened. And if Gary's trying to speak, and Gary's speaking in English, and these Mexican police looking at him like, man, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like, somebody better speak Mexican. Um, excuse me. Somebody better speak Spanish or it's going to be a problem. Here's what happened. The ladies were at the pizzeria, right? They wanted to get something to eat. The pizza place, they ordered pizza. The pizza came. They went to bite into the pizza. And according to them, the pizza was not cooked. It was doughy and it was cold. Now, pizza that they just purchased. Both of them had doughy pizzas that were undercooked, right? And unbeknownst to us, when they got these uncooked pizzas, they told the waiter, and the waiter said, well, these are your pizzas. And they said, well, can you send them back? Because these pizzas aren't cooked. They don't taste good. And so he went and got the manager, which was the little Mexican guy. And the Mexican guy said, the manager said, look, y'all ordered these pizzas. Y'all are going to eat these pizzas. And you're going to pay for these pizzas. And they were like, no, we're not paying for this. Because the Mexican guy obviously could speak English. 
And the lady said, no, we're not paying for these pizzas. And Gary happened to be with them at the time. So Gary kind of stepped in and tried to negotiate and be like, well, look, hey, my man, you know, they these pieces aren't cooked. They're not going to eat these pieces. And the Mexican guy said, look, I don't know how you do it in the United States, but here you're going to pay for those pizzas. Now, keep in mind. This doesn't happen anywhere else. I mean, like you can't go into the sizzler <laughs> and get a steak that's uncooked and you'd be like, no, nah, I'm not eating that. And they make you pay for it. You ain't paying for it. At the very least, you can get up and walk out. Right. Not in Cancun. So the guy was like, he was adamant about them paying for it. And so Gary, before he left, Gary gave, Gary gave him like $10, like $20. I think the pieces probably came up to like between the two of them and the tip might've been like $40. So Gary gave him like $20. Like, look, here's for your trouble. No, he didn't want that. He wanted them to pay for the pizzas or eat the pizzas or, or go to jail. That's what he wanted. And he called the cops. And so that's why we were standing there and the Mexican 5-0 was in our face. And all of us are standing there on the sideline. Keep in mind, we're waiting on the other van, which wasn't coming, unbeknownst to us, because we didn't know because the driver, I heard him on the phone calling like five different people because he couldn't get someone else to come to pick us up. And we were adamant about the fact that we were not going to leave. You know, if it was 10 of us, 10 of us that could get into that van, we're going to, we weren't going to leave the other 10. We, we all left together. We all came together. We're going to leave together. And so you had that going on, that scenario going on. And then you had the Mexican pizza police. <laughs> so the guy was just so adamant about them paint again. Think about it like this. You go to, I don't know, Red Lobster and your shrimp ain't cooked and you tell them to take it back and they're like, no, we're not taking your shrimp back. And they tell you that you got to eat it. And if you say you, I want to leave, then you just leave. You don't have to pay for the shrimp. But in Mexico, in this particular place, this dude wanted the money. And again, Gary had already gave him $20. So he is on the sidewalk adamant. I mean, he's throwing his hands up. He's, cussing and fussing and the police are just standing there like look what y'all gonna do you want to go to jail or you want to go home <laughs> and me and Sharice are looking at each other and I'm like yo bro I did not come here I did not come to Mexico to get arrested I no 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 I'm not going to jail I ain't going to jail for nobody right and I'm damn sure not going to a Mexican jail and, you know, none of us were in trouble, but it's just the fact that the police were there and we're a gazillion miles away from Atlanta. And the only thing I could think about is like, I can't go to jail. <laughs> I can't go to jail. I'm not about to go to jail over some pizza, let alone in Mexico. So Gary had already gave him $20. They turn around and give him another $40 on top of it. And now keep in mind, the U.S. dollar is stronger than the Mexican dollar at this point. So he's technically got 60 American dollars for some $20 pizza, right? But in Mexico, that $60 was probably by like $120. So he just made $120 off of some $20 pizza. So once Gary gave him the $40 on top of the $20 he'd already given him, the guy kind of calmed down and he told the cops it was okay and he walked away. And the cops with the AK-47s got back in their cars and drove away. And we were still standing there because we, at this point in time, we're still waiting on another van to come. And about 15 more minutes passed and another van came. We got in the vans and we headed back to the resort. But two people almost got arrested by the Mexican pizza police. 
man, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> That's going to do it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops each and every Thursday at midnight. From time to time, we will drop bonus episodes on Sundays at midnight. Again, I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. 5G.